fuck? I'm just trying to add some flavor, flavor, flavor. Um, anyway, so I have no goddamn clue what is going on. So we can yeah. confirm, ladies and gentlemen, you can pay to be a guest. Um, anyway, so flavor. You, what happened? You, tons of memes out there living the dream. Um, what you, happened? You, anyway, so what is going on? Please go the fat fuck away. Thank you. Tons of memes out there living the dream. Anyway, so... Look, I'm just trying to add some flavor. Um... I have no goddamn clue what is going on. Hello, Team Hearth League! We are here, and it's, it's a little sad. We're at the final Tavern Talk. For Ragnarok Season 9 and Sylvanas League Season 6, or as we called it earlier, Season 69, um, I am Force of Will, and I am joined by my regular co-host, Steffi. Steffi, how are you doing this evening? I just got hardcore distracted by Jacksaws. I'm so sorry. What? I'm doing wonderfully. Whoa. What I'm in the world so is that background? He, that is a man of all men. All right. he's, at the, he's at the club. <laughs> yes. I like that. But I'm doing so, good. How are you doing, Force? I'm doing well, doing well. Jack Sox, uh, you, can, can you take a moment from the club? Uh, yeah, yeah. How you doing there, Will? How's everybody? <laughs> All right, good, good. Jack Sox is here with us whenever he's not clubbing with whatever background that is. That's but awesome, like, I love the bow tie with the tank top and the yes. hat. Like, damn, yeah, 10 out of 10. The, the, the bow tie is the thing that really sells it, honestly. Let, let's, you know, let's be honest here. The bow tie really sells it. But... I just want you guys to know you can enter my cheat code on my hat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Unlock nice. all the levels. Speaking of levels, good good segue. Oh. Um, we we actually have with us, and even though there's only one picture for them, we have a total of five additional people here on this uh, on the, with us this evening, and it is the Ragnaros League Season Nine Champions Team Next Level. Team Next Level, how you doing? Well, first of all, everybody introduce yourselves. I guess that's a good start. Is yeah, just tell us who you are. <laughs> all right, oh, guys, this is going. Cool. How about uh, this? Right. I'll start. Um, so I'm Chai. Uh, I'm, I'm Excelsior. I'm Jamie's. Just doing. I'm Cesaro. I'm Diamond. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Is I, am I, am I missing I, th I think I heard five, but yeah, we're missing uh, Altenberg. He can't Altenberg. make it. Tonight. Yeah, but yeah, we have a statement that will be read later from him. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so we're here to celebrate the champions as well as to kind of wrap up Ragnaros League season nine and Savannah's League for that matter too for this season. So, let's get started. We only have one thing we got to talk about this week, and we got to talk about the finals match. Um between uh, Team Next Level and Voter No Confidence. So, um, I gotta admit, this was a pretty one-sided affair when uh, push came to shove. Sorry, Steffi, on this I, one, but... Look, I enjoyed every second of it, so I'm not complaining. So, uh, Team Next Level did beat Voter No Confidence 18-8. to uh, Brasky was able to beat Jammies. That was the only game they were actually able to win, though. Team Next Level won the other four games all by a score of 3-1. to one. So, congratulations on that. Um, for last week, we had uh, Cinder and Jammies here with us. Technically, because I'm going with what Jammies originally said, none of us were correct in picking Team Next. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the good news is Jammies logic did work because we sort of cast our curse, voted no confidence, and you know it worked out for this. So, Jammies, congratulations on I I, I don't even know what to say. It's just uh, playing the. Playing the reverse, playing the caster curse to your advantage, I guess. Yeah, it was a, a next level strat that we wanted to take advantage of, so it ended up nice. working for us, Con. Very nice. So um, we, besides picking who we thought was going to win, uh, we did also pick the match score. And you know, originally last week, I when we were on, I said, you know, okay, Jamie's and Steffi both picked like their team to win all the points. Um, to, you know, end up being like 20 to 7 or something like that. Uh, or I think Steffi Warrior is 20 to 8, something was, along those lines. something excessive, yeah. Yeah. Probably. But actually, but between everybody, Jambies was actually the closest picking the match score, as he chose 20 to 7, and the final score was 18 to 8. So he was only off by 
three total points between everything. So good job, good job, Jamie, for that as well. Thank you. This, this group is so talkative. I can't even. No, no. I was I know. Like, Please don't fight. Well, you guys... oh, are well, we supposed said... to be talking over Will? I can. I can start. <laughs> that's what i do every week no feel free i i'm i'm all for being interrupted so that's i'm perfectly fine with that so um so really we we just needed to kind of get an idea so here's definitely what i want to start off with i gotta say y'all have had one of the best runs through the playoffs that i have potentially ever seen y'all came in to the uh, playoffs as the four seed for the blue purple conference your first match was against the undefeated wins you beat them. Your semifinal match was against the reigning champions in Hot Pepper. You beat them. Then in the finals, you faced another undefeated team in Voto No Confidence. Beat them. And every single match, as we talked about last week, we considered y'all the underdogs in every single match. That so, was really helpful. Thanks. For yes, that. I, I'm sure it was. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks casters. <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> We do Especially to screw over our own teams. You guys are like honorary teammates, basically. Yes. <laughs> what you guys don't know is that they paid Steffi and I to make sure that they got through. That's that's got what it. you get. Facts. Facts. That's how I'm at this club right now. We, but, I, yeah, I, so... I, we threw the games. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We did it. We got our asses kicked. <laughs> so, uh, really, since y'all are coming in an underdog every week, uh, how did – and I know you sent us a bunch of stuff that we're going to – look at it in a moment or at least get a general idea on what we're dealing with it but how did y'all find the strategy every week to take down the opponents that were higher ranked higher well known better well known you know undefeated how did y'all how did y'all pull together to to get those uh results patterns yeah so we like it, it really i guess it really helped that we played the whims first to be honest because they had played a pretty consistent lineup going into the playoffs, and we figured, like, you know, um, they're, they've been playing pretty good. They haven't lost yet. Like, why would they change what they did? So we figured, like, all right, what's the best way that we could, like, make them think we're doing something different? And that's when Try and Altenberg suggested Murloc Priest. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we were, like, hard going after their Druids. We made a lineup that all beat Druid because it we made it look like we were going after their Paladins with, like, Priests and... I don't shamans too I think, um, but we like you know switched the script. the The problem was that you know the Whims are such a good team still, that um, we still had to execute against them, and you know they still pulled out some wins against us. I think they were the closest team to play us in the playoffs. So, you know, shout out to them. They helped us a lot, and they you know helped. I, I guess that, like playing them first really helped us. Yeah, that that Sunday morning was so scary. It was like us all in Discord eagerly waiting to hear Tri's results. Mm. Did, did, yeah. we actually, did we actually have that on Sunday stream, or was that a Sunday morning? Were you, was no, that, was, no, that was one was played Sunday night, uh, or Sunday afternoon at 1. It off was like 1, okay. right? Everybody was yeah. like, what's, what's Yeah, everyone in Discord was just kind of waiting, because I was kind of keeping live results up, too. So it, it was just, it was tied 2-2, two -two and everyone was just waiting, I could tell. Um, I named my decks nine and one that week too. I, I think that was a big part of the reason why I won. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we Very were nice. we were anxiously waiting in Fortnite to find out the results of Brewski's uh, <laughs> match. <laughs> so did, I, 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 now that we know that, did he make any statement to y'all after your match about you know naming the decks nine and one? No, he said it before the match too, um, and we were relative. Uh, we were definitely respectful towards each other. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about Bruski. He's a great player. I played against him multiple times and like ladder and stuff before, so I know just how good of a player he is. So it was nothing but respect for each other, and we both knew that walking into it, either one of us could win. And thankfully, just the um, off meta strategy just pulled the victory out for me. You know what's the funny thing about that though is we actually after uh, Altenberg caught Risen uh, off guard with that Murloc Paladin, we knew that was coming, and believe it or not, we were that was not the thing we were worried about. So when we found out that that final match came down to uh, the Murloc Paladin, a lot of us were shocked that that you ended up pulling it out. But uh, I will say that I have never seen Bruski actually practice and prepare as much as he did Sunday morning which I think is a uh, nonverbal tip of the hat 
to the amount of respect he had going into play try that day. Yeah, which is um, more to say, considering I was on tap last for about uh, two weeks or so before even Jack Sykes even realized I was his teammate. Yeah, didn't know. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. Keeping up with the whims was so much work that occasionally <laughs> I just had to go into uh, tap last and tell Nate to fuck off. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's that's real life. That happened. <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, they invited me back for next season. What the fuck is that? (laughs) All right. So now I'm just curious because since it's two undefeated seasons in a row, this is more a question for Jack size. Are y'all changing any personnel for next season or the PR the wins? The PR for the wins is over two thousand. Um, oh, actually, okay. I guess y'all are. <laughs> fun story that I will not give any spoilers to, but every single one of the whims is already committed somewhere else for next season. So nice. pay attention in the off season, find out more about that. I have to say I'm excited for every last one of them. Very nice. Very, very nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, next question that I had for TNL was, um, what do you think kind of the biggest contributing factor to y'all winning this championship was? Should, should I just go ahead and put the graphic up now? Is that? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. definitely right. prep. A hundred percent of the prep. Well, not a hundred percent, but like a lot of the work was done by Altenberg, who was like our team MVP for the playoffs. Like I was saying um, on my interview, on Sunday after my match, uh, Altenberg just went above and beyond and did so much research on every single player, not in, not only just his own, um, the person he was playing against, but just everyone. And he would do stats on like everything that they've been playing, trends that they have been doing. So we can kind of see what people have been playing, kind of get like a good advantage in just a class pick. And I think whenever you pick um, better classes than your opponent, you're already favored. And then, a lot of times when you walk into that situation, it's just a really good thing. So you're just going to – you're more likely going to end up ahead in that situation. Yeah, it felt really good knowing – just, like, being almost 100% positive that, like, you're going to be playing against these specific things that they're going to be trying to target or ban this specific thing. You just – it's like you take the game of Hearthstone and you only have to play – 30 percent of it because you're playing against three classes and that was just because altenberg was able to put it in front of our faces yeah i mean altenberg wrote one of these things for every single opponent we faced in the playoffs it was amazing he he was the backbone of why we did so well i must say and i know besides helping the uh, team next level I, I know altenberg did a lot of these very similar things for the entire league this season with the um lineup reviews right yeah he so, he was stacking that data everywhere yeah i'm looking at yeah. the super intimidating sheet in front of me and uh this is a lot of information to to digest um did everybody like let's let's have a, mo- a moment of honesty when altenberg's not here to take any offense like um how many of you used 100 percent of what he put in here uh how many of you were a little overwhelmed by it or what was the in your individual opinions the most helpful part of each one of these uh analysis that were done so uh, oh, go ahead uh, i'll just say this really quick um so we have meetings every tuesday and altenberg was like amazing and got these out before the meeting so it would be i would have like everyone read this so we each like 100 percent read ours and then went into it like and discussed this further right so this was just like the start and then we went into like, well, if they're bringing this lineup, they're likely to have these archetypes. And then we went into, you know, HS replay and did like, so what's our overall like favored matchup? Like what, which, which four decks are overall the most favored? And then it, does that align with what we think our opponent is bringing? If not, can we tweak the bands a little bit and see, you know, where we could increase our percentages? And we kind of went like that. Then we also thought about techs. Uh, I don't want to you know, take a, I, I think I want to let other people talk. <laughs> yeah i mean that we just um a lot of it was just back and forth we would spend an hour and a half in the call on tuesdays just talking about strategies and different things that we can come up with and everyone had a voice a lot of us are really good players in general so like everyone likes everyone's opinion has some sort of valid merit to it 
Um, so this was um, his documents weren't just 100 percent of our research. Like I was trying to say, like it was a big part of it. It was where we based our research off. We could see the trends that we were. I felt like personally myself, the most uh, important thing I was looking at was the trends that they were playing and then kind of seeing, OK, well, this is the weak class out of those. How do I target that class or how do I expect them to bring it and how do I target it? Or even do I have trends myself and what do I expect them to play? Like, oh, last week we've been playing Paladin a lot. They're all going to bring Warrior or bring something really weird. And are we OK with playing into that? And we said, yeah. Yeah, one of the more useful things for me was definitely uh, what the rest of the teams would like kind of know uh, how much prep the team we were playing against does relative to like the rest of the league. And that was helpful to figure out like, okay, are they going to look at, uh, at what we've been doing or are they just going to try to do something that's good or what have you? Because what I, before Altenberg started doing this, I would like try to do it for myself. Um, and it just like, it saved a ton of time. It was like an extra hour or two to practice because it, it's pretty time consuming. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was for, yeah. for him too, but um, <laughs> like it's a lot. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's pretty, he's pouring over spreadsheets for like each one of these players for probably hours to get this because he has, you know, last five weeks worth of data usually here, five, six, something like that. I mean, yeah, this is just an insane amount of data. So, all right. So, I love data. But data. My, 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 my question for this is, chances are, because I think y'all are well above 1900 PR right now, I don't think y'all are going to be able to stay together as your current unit. So if you were going to go to a different team, would you try to get somebody on your team that can do this type of data collection? Because I, I, that's the thing is, I don't know if every person can even do this type of data collection. This is huge. <laughs> I will say that I think the majority of this team will stay together, except for a, cu a few members. Um, uh, the few members that aren't playing are going to be playing as subs in oh, uh, specific okay. scenarios. And other people that just want to take a break because of how intense this season was for us. So, um, But it's not 100% um, like Rin and Stone yet, so you, you don't know what would happen. Oh, nice. So it's like, yeah, because I think if, if every team can find a statistician like Altenberg that's willing to just pour over spreadsheets and look up this information, that's going to be a lot. They're going to have a big advantage going into playoffs, the season, everything else. So mm -hmm. that's just a lot of data there. I will, I I will say, not want it. <laughs> I will say that one one thing I noticed about um, on the whim side of things. And this is the first time I've been on a team of this nature. We had our own stats, uh, statistician. And I definitely could say that that is a thing. If I were to ever captain again, would be one of the first pieces I'd want to fill because having somebody like an Altenberg, or I'll just go ahead and say it, a primo who are willing to, uh, grab all this data and put it together for a team. Um, mm -hmm. that it's, it, it's invaluable. And it definitely, like I used to kind of laugh at people that did this, but the results don't lie as we're sitting here while, uh, talking to our champions right now. And there's a reason that, uh, you know, the Wims have had the two seasons that they had in the past. Steffi, did you guys have a number cruncher over there? Yeah, I was just about to add on to that. So, like, this was the first team that I've been on, like, the past three seasons that was, like, really into the data. So we're Bob's in every, like, Monday because his hours were totally different. So, like, I'd be getting notifications at 3 a.m. my time on Monday. And he's like has all these charts for all of us based off the people that we are playing that week and kind of like deciding on a lineup um just based on the stats solely and like trying to like look at and analyze like what you know what would be considered good matches bad matches and things like that and like that 120 percent made all of us like this whole season like significantly better players like that's why we did as well as we did is because we weren't just like playing hearthstone to play hearthstone like we were being really logical about it and trying to analyze like situations and being like well what's really going to be the most optimal decks we can bring based off our opponent so yeah you like need that if you want to get as far and that's probably why all of us got as far as we did is because we yeah. did that extra steps yeah i think try brought this up as well like we don't just have five starters in our Discord. We have, like, me, I played the first five weeks of the season, and I was out, and Sazu came in, and he killed it. 
and like Killer Veebs, who played Jack Sox in the playoffs, and Saku came in at the end of the season. There's a couple other guys. You have a bunch of supports uh, as well to help the starting guys out. So it's it's a true like team uh, team effort to get to where we got. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, and as a captain of a team, I I figure it's like okay, well everybody can do their own analysis and stuff like that. But after seeing this and hearing what the whims and what voter no confidence have been doing this year, I might need to. So if you're a statistician or you like to crunch the numbers and you don't have a team for next season, might I offer a team mocks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like we all also did our own prep too. Yeah. Is, yeah. That was additional. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely helpful though. The baseline. Yeah. Like 50% of the work done, like out of the way and like 50% of the most time consuming work, just like out of the way. And then we can each build on that. Yeah, like, like, we started with stats, and then it was like me and Diamond and me and Sazru playing at like one in the morning, <laughs> for hours. The well, the stats I, are also good to like bounce your ideas off of, right? Like you you have right. these things that in theory it's like this should work. Let's look at the data and see does does yeah that it does work. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Absolutely. So okay, all right. So next question that I had for y'all is. Um, Besides winning the championship, obviously that was probably your biggest moment this season. But besides doing that, what was kind of – do you all have like a favorite moment of the season? Uh, right. I, kind of biggest moment? I definitely have to chime in here because my favorite moment was watching Jack Sauce's, uh top eight every single time. And every oh, single time he would leave out team next level, even though we were in that playoff spot. Like at that current spot, they're all like – Oh, just look out for all these other teams that Team Next Level has to play. Like, they're just going to be knocked out. They're not even going to qualify for the playoffs. And um, it just happened every week. And then we got to the playoffs, and people were just completely ignoring that we were actually a team. <laughs> You're welcome. So, I mean, we beat we beat the Thermic Wims, and everyone was just like, oh, whatever. The Hot pepper. It was a fluke. The Hot Peppers to sweep us. We crushed the Hot Peppers. And then yeah. no one, everyone was like, oh, well, vote no confidence is just going to win. And I mean, proved otherwise. Like, well, it's, I mean, it's what uh, I'm here for. I'm here to fuel championships, whether I'm on the yes. team or not. You're welcome. <laughs> I think for me, uh, favorite moment was probably um, when I first started like watching these things. And I watched the one kind of similar to what Tri is saying. Like, everybody was saying that our team sucks and then uh there was the um i was kind of hoping that a thing was going to happen and it did where i got to beat my opponent before one of these shows and it like happened during the show that it was like oh they're not going to win oh no they already won a match it was like it was fun now I, i will say one thing a lot of my analysis was not that you guys sucked it was that (laughs) the people you're playing (laughs) are better now to, to straight up call out some teams i mean there was teams out here that i straight up referred to as a punt for the week so you know yeah. it was it was less about hating on you guys and more about uh i i had high expectations for a bunch of teams that that i'm gonna straight up say choked at key opportunities not necessarily against y'all because i said it before we played you guys in the playoffs um, Maybe, sorry, we, sorry. Uh, the, I'm sorry. <laughs> the team That's we like... played week one is not the uh, same TNL that finished this season. The, the amount of growth that you guys uh, had over the course of the season was it, it reminded me of Zenergy of the past few seasons. This team mm-hmm. that at the beginning of the, the season were like, yeah, they're not a threat. And then you start looking at them and you're like, holy shit, this is building up to be something. Um, so just, just for the record, it's not that I was saying you guys ever sucked. It was just that there's some other teams that I thought were going to move to the next level, but couldn't. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to put words in your mouth about it. I was say, and, and in my defense, I did say during the championship, I thought, I thought it was close. I, I thought it was going to be like, and y'all even proved me wrong on that. I was really torn as to. I you I don't know you all realize how close I was to picking TNL last week, like, 
and the paladin did fool me. I will I will say that much. So that's my yeah, advice. By the finals, it definitely was like, oh, maybe they made it to the finals. Maybe they have a chance here. <laughs> so actually, the pal talking about the Paladin pick, that was 100% from the Thermic Wimps because we walked in initially to target Paladin against the Thermic Wimps. And then just in the middle of the week of practicing, I stumbled upon Murloc Priest. And I was actually having good results on it on ladder. Mm -hmm. So some of us changed our strategy to go target Druid in the middle of the week, and it worked out. But I, whenever we started targeting the Paladin, I was like, man, Paladin just doesn't really have that many bad matchups. Yeah, there's only mm -hmm. one type of archetype that's really popular, but they have to like pick Warrior and these really binary classes to actually target it. So if they if they hard target Paladin, you're just gonna beat like you just beat up on that. Uh, class that they brought that is just not optimal. Very true. Very, very true. Yeah, it's like, it, it, Pal Odd Paladin is one of those decks that or even like Murloc Paladin, that I think like its worst matchup is probably a 40-60. Maybe. They should have listened to me and just brought the even. <laughs> even did not fail me once all season long. <laughs> I was going to say uh, my favorite part of the uh, this past season is coming on Tavern Talk and uh Hearing you guys say that, like, I see four warriors on the vote of no confidence side. And I see nothing, yeah, I see nothing but paladins on team next level. So, you know, it's kind of hard to vote for team next level. And I was just like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I thought it was very funny because I, you, you guys saw what we did and I knew what we were going to do. Yeah. So it was just. Uh, Steffi has a burning response right now. I could see it. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, I. I, I agree, like everybody was saying that, except I wasn't thinking that at all. Because I was, in my head, I'm like, well, prior, I just tried to bring the best, like, pally deck that I felt like could just completely, you know, shut out Warrior really quickly. So, like, I agree with you that, like, you know, just because you see Warrior, like, I mean, the Warrior decks aren't that good. Like, you can do pally. What blew my fucking mind was, like... <laughs> I was so mad that I had to be the fucking guinea pig too. Like I hate being the first person to play on our team and I had to be the first person to play and I like Sorry. Oh, it's it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but like you guys were so smart and like cuz I only know my side of it. So we were play testing like fucking crazy. Like I was feeling so confident. I had this big druid deck that I was so excited to play which fucking banned so I didn't even get a chance to play it, but it's fine. And, like, I was just, we were, like, so thinking about the mainstream, like, because in our heads, we're thinking they're going to bring the best decks. And then, like, towards the end of the practicing, I'm like, guys, what if they, like, just completely do a 180 on us? You know, like, it's totally possible. And we're kind of like, eh, maybe not. Like, it's whatever. We'll find out tonight. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. I just, like, I, we're just all of us. All, all, all five of us were just kind of like sitting back after everything. We're just like, we have so much respect for the fact that in the finals, you guys made the choice to play smarter. Like, it, you weren't going to be mind like, games. okay, let's THL do... THL mind let's, games. Yeah, like, we're like, we're not going to do meta versus meta because that would have been extremely close. Period. End of discussion. Everybody knows that. But, like, you guys took a step further and was like, we're going to play really fucking smart. And just, like, either tweak decks that are kind of commonly good to make it, like, more favor to me, right? Like, I know what to expect when my opponent does it. Like, I'm sitting there, game one, fucking Zoo versus this Shaman deck, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm playing. If you're down a shutter walk, I'm like, my mind is blown. I don't understand. And, or, like, you bring these completely, like, original concepts that people aren't expecting, and you literally just, like, kind of have the Steffi. art of surprise. Would you say that they took a deck to the next level? Wait, uh, the yeah. the next the next level? Yes, and like I literally like after the match, I literally was like crying my, I fucking suck. But then like after the waterworks, I'm like, damn, I'm like they're so fucking clever. I'm like I'm not even mad if they win. I was like, you know what? Like, and I was expecting it because then we're all like, well maybe they'll go meta. Like, you know, we saw, like, Steffi versus, you know, we're like, oh, okay, so they'll go back. And we didn't know what to expect. And then I have a just... question. Oh, yeah. 
did you guys change anything up after that first match, or did everybody keep going with yes. what they had already? Nope. Uh, we we changed a little bit. Robobson changed his warrior uh, list completely. Um, so how that went. Um, so that was changed. <laughs> I love no. that man. I, I mean, I, I can say that because I think he's probably, if not the best player in the league, but like, I, yeah, there was some changes. We were all sitting there like, what the fuck in the Discord? I'm like, did you see that? And we're all like, yes. And so it's like, what do we do? And so, yes, there were some changes. Like, not, it wasn't like completely like, we're like, all right, let's change everything. But we definitely took a step back to reevaluate because we're like, oh, you want to be clever? We can be clever too. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that uh, just to echo <laughs> Steffi's thoughts there, everybody that lost in our matchup that came back to the Discord was more so, holy shit, you should have seen what they did, more so than, fuck, I lost. So it was, it was yeah. more like a it was more like a awe than a disappointment, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like it was an honor to get beat. Did like. I don't know. Like I, we were really sad. Obviously, we were literally undefeated in the final. I'm like, still fucking kudos to those guys. They're insanely good. But like, I'm happy to have lost in the way that we did because it literally was playing so much smarter. Like literally next level. That's why you are who you are because you literally <laughs> took it to the next fucking level, and we weren't ready for you. And like, you you got you got us. So congratulations. I don't. I went off on a tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, that's fine. So, um, so we talked about your plans for next season. So, this is basically going to be the last tavern talk before <gasps> Boomsday Project comes out. So, as this meta is wrapping up, do y'all think that there was like a best deck and a, and a most overrated deck, or you know, just kind of what are your thoughts on the conquest meta as a whole now that the season's been completed? Most overrated deck is Shutterwalk Shaman. Yeah, and 100%. I, and this is because yes. I've, I and I know a lot of pros say that this deck is really good, and you have a lot of praise for the deck. But I feel like so many times in favored matchups, I don't like playing decks that um, have a percent chance to lose, even if in a favored matchup. And also, I just noticed that my hand always feels really clunky as Shutterwark Shaman, and I feel like the deck was very targetable. I feel like Shaman as a whole was a targetable class, so I was really pushing people away from Shaman for a long time um, after playing it myself. So I think that was the most overrated deck. And the best deck, I don't know if I could pick like the best deck, but I think the best class, 100%, was Warlock. I brought Warlock every single week. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, I just don't think there's a easy way or even like a good way to target Warlock in general. No, there's not. We were going to say, like, all season, we were, whenever someone was thinking of, like, hey, I'm thinking about going after that Warlock, we're like, well, you know, let's take a step back here and uh, talk about that a little more. Like, a soft target, sure, but I think, like, if if people were trying to hard target Warlock, they were going to have a bad time just because... I don't know, so it worked for me. <laughs> I kind of like Shaman, personally. I don't know if that... I mean, but... also, the Warlock didn't really have the aggro, a.k.a. zoo tempo bullshit until the tail end of the season, right? I mean, like, they had it, but it didn't really start showing. Well, that's what made it harder to target. Yeah, but that did come around until what? Like, start of playoffs, that, that really picked up speed? Yeah, yeah. it was about, about three weeks. Mm-hmm. That was half of the season for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to respond to your, your Shutterwalk comment, if I may. Um, cause I feel the opposite about it in this sense, especially in a tournament format, uh, Shutterwalk Shaman is easily targetable, right? Yeah. However, you have to change your entire lineup for that and make it weaker to literally everything else. Right. Cause with Shutterwalk, it's kill them before they get the combo or just lose the game. Right. Which now means that I have to go more aggressive against things like, potentially warrior potentially warlock potentially big dr- like all these things that are just gonna shit on me if i try to go aggressive so i think I also- it it was the most meta defining of tournament play this expansion 
I also think you can tech Shutterbox Shaman to beat anything that would target it at the cost of some of its other matchups. But if you can go in and expecting what you're going to play against as it, mm -hmm. you can almost always find a build that will you'll be favored for it. So. Yeah. I like right. Shaman this season. I feel like it's yeah, more uh, I played a fair amount of Shaman, so I was on the, I was on the Shaman board for a bit. So, all right. So, um, uh, as we mentioned earlier, unfortunately Altenberg was not able to be with us this evening. But I believe y'all have a statement from Altenberg that y'all would yeah. like to. I don't know who has it, but I have whoever it. Would, whoever would like to read it, go ahead. Yeah. So Altenberg says, "Hey THO, sorry I couldn't be on Tavern Talk to tell you this in person." But thank you to Jamies for reading this. You're welcome, man. When I look back on the season, I see a team that was new in the early part of the season with some rookies and players that had never played together before. Our team went 0-3, and we had some difficulty gelling and finding our groove. But after the nerves hit, we started to find our stride. When you look at our stats on an individual basis, you will not see anyone that truly dominated each and every week, except for maybe Suzuru. But you will see a team with five players that can win at any given week. Once we found out we were in the playoffs, we ramped up our preparation. While I did put together some stats and analyzed player tendencies, our win was a team effort. We had lots of great discussion in our Discord, both in voice chat and regular chat. We spent hours breaking down lineups, possible bands, and deck choices to put ourselves in as many favorable matchups as possible and practicing some of the off-meta matchups. I believe our success in the playoffs stems from that extra preparation. Case in point, all five players performed better during the three weeks of the playoffs than in any three-week stretch during the regular season. I had a great time preparing and working with these guys from TNL, and even if the band has to break up due to PR cap issues, I'm happy that we took things to the next level this season and won a championship. Thanks to TNL for being great teammates, and thanks to everyone in THL for being great league and being great competitors. This league continues to get better and better and has a bright future. Oh, that's nice. Excellent. Nice and so, worried, Altenberg. That's the word. So actually, he brought up something that was... So he brought up something that I did want to bring up uh, afterwards now. So was the was the mid-season nerfs, was that the... Do y'all think that was y'all's turning point for the season, or...? Yep. Definitely. Yep. Definitely, huh? Definitely. That, All right. I think personally, the turning point for me was whenever I had I had the time to stop focusing on Sylvanas because I was spending <laughs> way too much time on both leagues where I was just playing Hearthstone nonstop and it just wasn't enough time to mm -hmm. focus on both leagues. So once I, uh, we unfortunately didn't make the playoffs in Sylvanas, I was able to put 100% of my time <laughs> into Ragnaros. Nice, very nice. So I have a little bit of a unique perspective on this because I played the first five weeks of the season and then we had to put uh, Suzuru in as a sub and because I was less PR because I lost to KD. Uh, he came in as the permanent sub and I think that was really the turning point of our season because I opened up two and three, which was just bad. And then Suzuru came and our two seed just started destroying people. Mm. So well done to you, Suzuru. Yes, well done. Blush. She is I'm good not, at destroying two seeds. So I'll give them that. I, I'm not gonna lie. I I strongly advocated for my uh, my my season ten team to uh, get up in your DMs. I guess it didn't work. What? Wait. What? Uh, are you talking about me? Talk about Suzuru. Suzuru. I I haven't gotten any DMs. What? Oh, not yet. Really? What? Oh my no, god. I feel like you guys should have already gotten a bunch. Uh any any potential season ten captains that are out there and in, sliding up into DMs, if you're not up in Suzuru's DMs, uh you're doing so, this wrong. You're doing this yeah. fucking so, wrong. So, le so let me let me see, let, let me see if I can uh try to solidify one thing here. Suzuru, do you have any interest in playing Sylvanas League next season? Sylvanas League? <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I guess. I like the I like the league, but <laughs> I'm just I... trying to get you. <laughs> so, I, I have, in other words, I I'm definitely playing rag league, league again, I, but I don't know like how much time I have. I I would want to. I, I have a two seed spot, so we'll we'll, we'll talk after this. <laughs> like, All right. Oh, yeah, I, have, I have a two seed spot. Deals before, so. happening live on Tavern Talk. Tavern Talk. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Sorry. Got it. All right. So. 
Um, I was looking through the questions. I didn't see any specific. I, I guess Garrett Lee asked if the casters picked TNA to win. Do y'all think y'all still would have won? <laughs> was it was it Jamie's strategy that you know? I don't think the, we would have won the championship. Been less motivated. Okay. I feel like I can't answer this since I asked the question. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like. This, this is the thing that I, this is the thing I hate about Facebook is unless I know like a hundred percent certain who the screen name is behind the thing, I just don't know. Like, I still like, mix up I Sage don't... and me, myself, and I on Facebook yeah. all the time. I've asked really? them; and it's been clarified. I actually every time I say this on Tavern Talk, me, myself, and I will then Facebook message me to go, "It's me." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's so many forget. people. Funny. It's hard to remember who everybody. Like by like the, it, like especially on like the Facebook to like the Discord and stuff. I'm always like, wait, who is? That? Oh, especially Which when you're obnoxious like that? me and you have three different names on each one. Yeah, that's yeah, true. that's Just... true. Like but I mean, was, I was like, who the fuck is this E S A D node? <laughs> He's just an asshole. Don't worry about him. <laughs> see, see, that's why that's why I try to keep the same throughout and just make it easy. That's true. <laughs> I'm also incredibly lucky because like I'm one. And like Steffi is Stephanie, and it's just pretty fucking obvious that. Yes. Hi. Hi. All right. So Hockey Boys asked a question. I guess this is a Jamie's question here. So, mm-hmm. what are Jamie's opinions on Pajama Sam Three? You are what you eat from your head to your feet. I have no clue what the hell he's talking about here. So, do you have any clue as to what he's talking about? Yeah, you should never. Like you should never wear anything that you can eat. Um, that's all I'm. Gonna um. Say. Mm, I think <laughs> yeah, it's like. Depending on the context, but okay. I, I, we're not going to go down this avenue, but I could argue that too, Steffi. <laughs> we on the yeah, same like, wait, like, wait a minute. I was going to say, it's like, hold on. Uh, that's... All right. Yeah. Should right. we move well, on well, to the well, next well, topic? You, you on just learned board? something about me and Jack Sox today. <laughs> like, all right. So, hey, I, I, I was agreeing with y'all two, so I guess it's learned about all of us. Maybe that's uh-huh. why we're all casters here at Tabber <laughs> So, all right. So, I think I, I didn't see any other big questions. Like, uh, there were some questions about acidic swamp Is there something specific? I'm trying oh, to God. forget. I forgot oh, from the God. playoffs. Can I make a comment on this first, please? I yes. feel like I have. Okay, picture this, Steffi. I'm sitting on picture my bed. Picture this. On my, we I'm are both naked, banging. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, wa- I'm watching this, and I'm like, okay, this is not a favorite matchup. But he has the fucking news in his hand. I'm like, okay, he's got his little giants. He's got his board. He's going to play the Uzi and everything's going to be good. And he fucking does it. And I'm just like, what are you doing? I'm literally messaging hockey. Hockey. I probably even have like the fucking verbatim conversation. I literally said, what did I say? I was like, what? I'm like, why? What? Why did he do that? I'm like, did you just see what happened? And he was like, he really just fucked up so badly. And I was like, agreed. And then that was it. Like, it was just done. I was hoping Tri was going to make the read not to play the weapon on five, because, like, it was possible to figure it out. But, and I'm watching it, and I'm, like, distraught. And, like, two more turns pass, and I'm still just kind of, like, distraught. And I'm like, wait a minute, he still has his weapon. What's going on? (laughs) Yeah, I was, um, I was very... I was trying to keep track of the left card because I figured that if he had the weapon removal, it was going to be like the the left card because he held it on for like a very long time and kept it. I think he kept it in his mulligan. Um, and I almost there, coined there Possessed Lackey there. But I felt like if I coined Possessed Lackey, I had a bigger chance to lose at that point because if I got Doom Guard, I didn't have any AoEs in my hand and Doom Guard just mm-hmm. wasn't enough to do anything. So I felt like weapon was my best bet. I mean, yeah. you clearly just had the next level read that he was going to have the oh, most not play it, right? <laughs> and also, I mean, I I guess the whole playing fast thing kind of worked because it, it took him off. I don't know. I will say that comment kind of, at first, when I heard you that, I was like, that's kind of fucking rude. But I'm also kind of possessive of, like, my team. But I knew you didn't, after, the, after that I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, he's not meaning it to be, like, mean. Because every like, no, that, I mean, like if you're not a fast yeah. player, and then you're kind of forced to be that, like of course you're not going to play as well as you would. You know what I mean? I like say, if you're forced to kind of like keep up. Because at first I'm just like, excuse me, I'm like, I'll message him right now. 
I think it's like the opposite of rude, right? Because I, like, I think the opponent is so good that you have to do something extra like that to gain yeah. an advantage. Yeah, I, after, and, after later I thought about it. I'm like, okay, never mind. I still, it, I still it, it, like him. I'm like, we're still cool. But it's as, just as, someone, as someone who play, as someone who plays Magic, is like, no, that is absolutely a strategy. If you think, you know, okay, if my opponent's playing quicker, then they might be more likely to make mistakes. That's yeah. that is completely a viable strategy, and it works in Hearthstone too. It does. I mean, it, so. Don't yeah, I, I didn't mean it as any disrespect. I mean, I know Robson's a great player. I don't yeah. like the three people I played against in the playoffs. I knew that they were some of the best players, if not the best players in the league. Mm -hmm. So I just, I happened to be watching the bot and I noticed that he was making very, I, I didn't think it was anything major. I just noticed smaller mistakes where if he spent a little bit more time thinking about it, he could have arguably made a different decision, which could have been like, a big factor later on in the game and i was like well i play fast usually and i wonder if this was caused because of him playing fast it's really hard mm -hmm. to tell with a with like one series sample size but i figured that i just made the read that said hey i'm, I'm gonna play fast hopefully it it makes him to play a little bit faster too it makes him make a little bit more awkward uh plays in general just because he wants to keep up with my tempo Right. And it just happened to work out. It did. Uh, I didn't mean it as any disrespect at all. And I, of course, I didn't expect something like that to happen. You can never expect something <laughs> like that to happen. But it's just, um, yeah, oh that, that was really it. Yep. All right. So I think that wraps up all the questions that we had for you at Team X level. But now we need to hand out some hardware here. So oh, we're going to move on to the Regnerus Season 9 awards as well as the THL awards. Um, the, the THL awards, if you're wondering, is going to be kind of the things that don't technically fit into one league or the other. Um, but we're actually going to start with that. So y'all can all click the link. Can we now. click the link now? I've been so good. Y'all can all click the link now. It is like, creeped. so, so scroll, scroll down all the way to the bottom, to page, uh, three or three. All right. So we're going to start off with, this is the first of the THL awards. And we're going to start off with blogger of the season. So we actually had uh, quite a few people who did a great job uh, with blog articles on a routine basis uh, for the for the league. And so we wanted to honor two of these uh, bloggers for the season. The runner up for this award is actually somebody who just came back to the league this season. Jerry Damage. Jerry Damage is the runner up with his 10 questions. Um, series where he interviewed uh, different members of the league. Did y'all get a chance to read these uh, articles? The blog articles? I got I got to not only read a few, but proposed a couple, and Jerry actually went and uh, asked uh, the Risen article. I could take credit on proposing that one. I enjoyed them thoroughly. Yeah, they were all really, really good. A any other thoughts on uh, Jerry's uh, 10, 10 questions article before we move on to before we move on to the winner. All right, so the winner is actually somebody we talked about a lot already. Mm -hmm. Altenberg is the winner for blogger of the season um, with his lineup trends articles. I think he did one literally every, I, I think he started on week one. I think he had something set up for every single week through week nine. So he was, and he did about as much in-depth discussion with these articles as he was doing with, you know, for a team next level in the playoffs. So you guys see a small bit of it, but he was doing all that for the entire league on a weekly basis for a blog article. So congratulations, Altenberg. Uh, any, any thoughts on Altenberg's uh, work on the lineup trends? He is obviously an individual with a passion for both writing and pouring over hours of uh, data. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, Agreed. all right. So the next award, uh, TNL, y'all have any uh, feedback on lineup trends article from Altberg? I mean, if I got to vote for this for the award, I'd give it to him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I appreciate that. All right. Quiet. So, um, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm, once we get to the RAG Awards, I'm going to start handing it off, but I want to get through the content awards real quick as well. So Twitch show of the season. So this is the Twitch stream that, you know, for the for the season. For the runner-up, the show is Friday Night Fights. So this is uh, Slimsh, 
Dark Sea, Dark Side, Don Day. Um, pretty much a great show every Friday night. Uh, they covered everything. They covered some rag. They covered some silv. They even did a couple MCL um, here. And actually, they're going to be doing a little off-season stuff, as we'll get to when we talk about the off-season plans. Um, but congratulations to them on the runner-up for Twitch Stream of the Year. Any any thoughts on? Yeah, this one, uh, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed the chemistry. You know, good chemistry in a casting crew uh, can make mm. or break a show. Um, yeah. I have to say that these guys did a great job of complimenting one another and meshed very well for quality content. They absolutely did, yes. Uh, and it doesn't matter the combination – Dark side Donde, dark side Slimch. You yeah, know. I agree. Um, they were actually did a great job with that. So, any other any other thoughts on Friday Night Fights before we move to the winner of this category? No, All right, sounds like let's go. Nope. Let's go. All right, so the winner for Twitch stream uh, Twitch show of the season, and of course we had to give it to them because I don't know if y'all know how much work in it went into this for two weekends um, for this, but the winner of this award is Battle of the Discords. Both the North America and the EU. And boy, I have a list of people to run through here. So we have Josh Sampson, Brasky, Andy Rogers, Crackshot, Opti, Slimch, myself, Cal, Darkseid. Many, many more people behind the scenes, way too many to name, who assisted with this. This was probably one of the biggest tournament projects that THL has taken on. And I think everybody involved with it did a wonderful job. And so I definitely wanted to honor them with the Twitch show of the season. Especially the EU, the people who worked EU, you know, people getting up at 5 a.m. Eastern, some even earlier for Pacific, to to get up and cast and stream and assist and everything else. I, I think they just did an absolute wonderful job this season. So congratulations to everybody that was involved with Battle of the Discords. Any any thoughts on, I know Try has some thoughts on Battle of the Discords. So. Yeah, thanks for casting it so uh, <laughs> you guys can see me win. Yes. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, sheer man hours alone, it's uh, well well deserved. Uh, definitely, definitely earned. Yes, agreed. All right, I wish Excellent. I could have so, All right, well, the good news is we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to off-season plans. So... <laughs> Um, so the next category is content producer of the season. So in the runner up spot for this one is actually, he's in position. He's in, in position. position. He's in position. In position is the, con the runner up content producer of the season. Um, he through some very difficult cir circumstances, I will admit, um, he actually stepped up the second half of the season, especially with assisting with Salty Saturday and Sunday Showdown. Mm -hmm. And there are some weekends that I actually used him for both shows um, for this. So, I mean, he just, he put, up, he, he put out a, little, a lot of time, a lot of work, and he also made a bunch of graphics for each time he was on, whether he was, you know, covering matchup spreads and everything else, especially in the playoffs. So, uh, what are your thoughts on in position uh, runner up content producer of the season? Yeah, I got, I'm going to talk on this one real quick because in position is a great player. And like, you know, he, I feel like he does a lot and he's so modest about it. Like he's not in your face. He's just like, I'm like, yeah, I'm happy to help. I'm here. Here I am. And so like, I, I'm really happy to see that he's getting a nice little honorable mention over here. Cause he definitely, and especially like you said, the last few weeks, he's been doing a lot. And just so willing to help out. So I support this choice of the stream yeah. position. Can I add to it too? Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, I like see in position everywhere and like not in a bad way. Like whenever I see him comment on anything, it's either something really funny or it's something mm -hmm. uh, very informative and very helpful. Whenever I think whenever I've ever been in contact with him, it's always been pleasant and he's always been efficient and incredibly helpful. So kudos to him. Mm -hmm. I think there's two Excellent. types of people in any community, uh, adders and detractors. Uh, Impo is nothing but a positive addition to any community he's in. He's always okay. looking to lift people up, lift the community up, and uh, steer it in a positive direction. So shout out, Impo. He, he, and, and, uh, oh, yeah. I want to probably have Don Day's comment in the chat. Yeah, Don, his lead in music to his streams were, was amazing. Yes. Well. Yes, they were. One day I too. I, now, 
De Going did Steffi hard. just completely cut out for anybody else other than me? Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. I turn to a robot? No, no you, you just, just disappeared. You oh, got so out. enthusiastic, you overloaded the mic. Sorry. I was just saying how, like, he does. He plays bangers. Bangers before, the, like, his little stream. So I, that's all I said. It was good. <laughs> all right. So we are now to the winner of Content Producer of the Season. And uh, the winner of this award is actually in the call with us right now. It is... Jack Sox. So Jack Sox, Aww. Jack Sox has been doing a lot this season. So of course, obviously Tavern Talk, which you're seeing right now, but he also put out his own VOD basically every week with the Ragnaros top eight, um, and that was usually about 15 to 20 minutes of content just going through the teams, and that that's not even counting editing and everything else associated with that. Then on top of that, if you're in the Discord and you're were a member of the uh, THL Fantasy League this season you would see a weekly article from Jack Sox about like a, I guess for fantasy football, they would call it like a start sit article. I guess it's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah. Or but hot, not yeah. Hot, not. Yeah. So <laughs> Jack Sox has been all over the place with video, with, you know, blog articles, everything else. So Jack Sox is the content producer for season nine, six or six, nine. That's, so congratulations that's, two, Jack Sox. that's two in a row. You'll see me here again next season. Look out for uh, THL Pirate Radio coming in the off season. Nobody knows what it is because that's how pirate radio works, boy. Oh, nice! I like it. <laughs> all right, so we so that was actually all the THL content awards for this season. So now we have one THL player award for uh, THL season nine six, and this is actually a crossover player. So this is a player who played in both Ragnaros and Sylvanas League. Um, they had to play a minimum of four games in Silph and a five minimum of five games in Ragnaros. Um, uh, Steffi, you want to give us the yes! crossover player? Can I do this one, please? Thanks. Okay. Yes. The, the, Thank you. Remember, do do, do runner up first. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, I, Jesus, I, I, Steffi. This isn't my first rodeo. I've done this before. Okay. I, knew, I knew she would be excited for this one, so that's why I'm letting her do it. So, hear me out. This fine runner up, Dave Petum from Team Black Lotus slash Collective Mayhem, he went 11-5. That's insane from both leagues. That's why he's our runner-up. Like, we all know his name. He's the man of mystery. He did like, phenomenal. That's crazy. He, That's your teammate. It is, yeah. It's like, no, he he absolutely killed Silver League this season. I think his record in Silver was like 5-2. and two. So, yeah. I, I mean, just absolutely insanely good season. Yes. Uh, for Black Lotus. Um, and then, uh, yeah, for Collective Mayhem, I mean, again, he was on a playoff, he was on a team that made the playoffs. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull that off in Silver League for him, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, made the playoffs uh, and got to the quarterfinals. So, yeah, Dave Petum did, did a great he, job with this season. So, congratulations to him. Phenomenal. He kicked so much. Petum! Okay. So. We all know who I'm going to say because we all know who I get excited about in this league. But the person Jasper. Who's to... <laughs> I do love Jasper. The actual winner for the crossover player award is obviously going to be Robobson from the 65 million, 340,000, 285 boards, as well as vote of no confidence. He went 12 2. That's disgusting. Like, I can't even put into words how impressive that is. And I mean, yes, I'm biased and all, but like, whew, I don't, I, I, that's, I, I don't even know what um, to say about it other than like, I'm, that's, I'm, can, I'm, can I ask a question about that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Hey, hey, try. How impressive is 12 and 2? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Can you, can you say that again? Uh, <laughs> Steffi laughed over what you said. <laughs> I, I was just wondering, um, try what you thought about Robobson's impressive twelve and two season. I mean, he's obviously a very good player, um, and Steffi has so much faith in him. I mean, I how do. can you ever doubt him? Exactly. Look, if you're one of my favorites, in okay, like this, this is how it works now. Oh, but yeah, so that's the winners uh, for the crossover player awards. <laughs> For THL season sixty nine, let's go. <laughs> I, was like, I do. I do want to point out also. He he won Silver League with the Boars, yes. and yes. he made the finals with Voter No Confidence. So even even with an impressive regular season record, he still you know his teams made 
you know, won championships or made it to the finals of championships. So congratulations to Rob Bobson. Mm-hmm. So oh. now we're now we are to the RAG Awards, and we're going to start off with Big Game Hunter. So this is basically the player that gained the most PR in one week or was constantly shooting down people who were way higher than, than them in PR. Well, you need to so, give this one to me. You need to give this one to me. I'll give this one to you. Go <laughs> ahead. Knock it out. All right. So as, as a fellow five seed and a former fake Canadian, I could not be any happier to announce that the runner-up for Big Game Hunter is none other than THL's very own sweetheart, Saku. Saku Bay. I, I know you can't see my cam right now, but I am dancing for you up in this club with a heart right over my heart. I just want to know, Saku, do you love me? No? Maybe? Never ever leave from beside me? Okay. Uh, yeah. My apologies. I'm a, I'm a huge Saku <laughs> fanboy. Um, and I'm super happy to see my former teammate doing so well. Uh, and, you know, our winner, I'm actually equally, if not more happy, uh, about our winner, because I called this individual out in the very first Jack Sox's Ragnaros League Top 8 Power Rankings. And I said that this might be an anchor for this team. And instead, they took that challenge and said, hey, Jack Sox, you're fucking wrong. Uh, it goes ahead to be our uh, Big Game Hunter winner with multiple games where they were the underdog, including 183 points. Two 140 points and 113 PR underdog win. Karakarn, you did it. You're here. You're a legend in my heart. Congratulations. Hot. That's very hot. It's like, it's very hot. I like, when, when, I was, when I was pouring over stat sheets last night, I just kept flicking through week by week. I was like, wait, what? What really like so for for care card i was like because normally like the, the big game hunters are normally like oh they beat a 200 or they beat like mm-hmm. a 250 or something like that care card was tearing this up just left and right it's like 130 183 yeah 100 versus 283 no problem 100 versus you know 240 no problem easy you know and i mean it wasn't like three twos was, i think there were even a couple three o's in there there were some sweeps Karakarn. So congratulations to Karakarn. And Saku, Saku, uh, he has the next highest, basically, which is a 141 PR Dang. underdog. And he, he won that one. So That's impressive. So any, th- any thoughts on Karakarn and Saku from Team Next Anybody? Level? Team I Next think, Level? Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think Saku's going to be a familiar face around these parts. Uh, <gasps> <gasps> done, done, done! Done! Oh! That's that's hot. I like that's it. Nice. Jamie's I like it. it. Moist. <laughs> Giving you guys some uh, <laughs> some intel there. Yeah. Nice. I like it. I appreciate that. All right. So we are now to best new team. So this was a team that was this is their first season um, in the league, and we are handing out the award for the best new team. And I really don't think either one of these is a surprise. Um, does somebody on uh, TNL want to take this one? Try maybe try or yeah i can definitely take this okay um, all right so for the best new team the runner up here has to be the serenai pain gang for getting to the quarterfinals in their first season that's very impressive i mean we barely made it into the playoffs and they got into the quarterfinals like no like no problem I, it's definitely very impressive you guys have any thoughts um, I mean, they, yeah they, they were the they brought the pain they, yeah, they, they brought the pain. Yeah. They, they, um, my favorite pain they brought was the self-inflicted wound of uh, asking for a rematch <laughs> of the team they lost to week nine. But <laughs> Okay, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yep, he is correct. Hi, my name is Jack Sox, and I don't give a fuck. Hi, Jack Sox. <laughs> it, it was good to see Sarah and All I right. Pain Gang do well, too, because they're kind of like our sister team. Like, Dark Side was on TNL last season. Coles was on TNL last season. Donde was on uh, TNL's Silv team. I think he was this season as well. So it's good to see TNL doing well, boop, 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 boop. even when they split off from us. All right. Oh. And so the the winner for best new team. All right. The winner, as no surprise for everyone else, uh, is Voto No Confidence, or Voto All Confidence last Aww. week. Um, because for getting to the Ragnar season nine finals in their first season, uh, let's take this off to Steffi because it was her team. Oh. Yes. Well, I would like to thank Hockey because he was our captain and Rebobble for making all the 
spreadsheets and stuff for us. And really, everybody's just brought the flavor. I mean, you know, we lost once and I'd rather lose in the final. So yeah, go, go photo, no confidence. You know, this is our, our only time we're going to be here because our PR cap is way too fucking high. So, hey, yo. Hey, yo, Ripperino. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hockey can keep the name. It's just, you know, probably, not, think, gonna, probably think, not gonna look the same. I think there's gonna be a lot of changes for all of us next season, so it should be mm. a good time. Good time. All right. So the next award that we have is social butterfly. So this is a very subjective award. Um, this is basically the person that talks too much in Discord. You know, we have a, as an example hockey here as someone who has won this in the past. <laughs> um, and again, also, this is really more recognizing po positive contribution versus kind of that bad, you know, bad signal to noise ratio. Um, really just want, you know, people to get involved, be positive about the league and everything else to win this. And so actually, I'll take this one. So the runner up for Social Butterfly, someone that I've actually been seeing a, posting a lot, lot more on the Discord lately is Sage. Aww. So unfortunately, Sage, I don't think Sage was on a team this season. Um, at least formally. So, but Sage been getting really involved with the Discord, really involved with the, um, really involved with the uh, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitch chat and everything else. So, congratulations to Sage, runner up for Social Butterfly. Any any thoughts on this one? I recently learned, as recently as like a couple hours ago, that apparently Sage memes oh. are on fire right now. Uh, this is. <laughs> Direct wording from Brewski is uh, Sage memes are currently on fire. Just thought I'd put that out there for you guys. Yeah, best meme. Yeah, I'm seeing in chat right now. Brewski, best memes in THL. On fire. Precious memes by uh, Covenex. Yeah, I so, mean, this is coming from multiple sources here. This is clearly uh, something that I need to figure out and become uh, more associated with. Yes, Ooh. absolutely. So, the winner for a social butterfly and actually i gotta give it up to blue sombrero in chat he actually nailed this one uh the winner is saku maple syrup inc again so, sort of the same reason um they call him nice guy saku for a reason i think he named his discord name he nice guy saku. really nice so again just overall just a lot of involvement with the league and so congratulations to saku any thoughts on saku uh I, I have a thought right here that uh, it's just this is like the epitome of Saku. He's he's saying this is a no brainer. Kel wins this hands down. This is the kind of guy that Saku is. Yes, uh, so nice. You know, that always always looking for the positivity in other people and always lifting other folks up. Uh, but also, say, shout out to Kel for. I was kind of going to say though. I really feel like Kel definitely this. I'm going to say well, okay. So a, a little thought behind this is. Kel and Opti won the Sylvanas Social Butterflies. Uh, uh, so okay. I really didn't want to repeat, you know, Kel and, Rock, Kel and right. Opti. Both, both awesome people. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I want to make sure we, you know, spread the love around a little bit. So, makes sense. So it's like, but yeah, no, Kel is the, Kel is the freaking man, Brewski. You're correct about that. So, the freaking um, man. But yeah, the winner for Social Butterfly for Ragnarok Roast League is Saku and runner up is Sage. All right, so the next category, top captain. So, of course, this captain has to be good at being a captain. Um, uh, you need to again, give this... this one to me. You need to yeah. give this one to me. Now. Give it to me now, Will. <laughs> Take it. Take it away. Do it. All right, so what Will was about to tell you is that this captain is good at being a captain, which I can tell you as a statement of fact, our runner-up definitely is best captain THL. Um, and that would be Hockey Boys, a.k.a. Yes. Tennis Boys 3 of Vote No Confidence, for having an undefeated regular season. Um, Steffi, what are your thoughts on your captain? I mean, he's the best. I love hockey. He's so positive, and he always was encouraging us to just do our own thing, and I fucking love that guy. And he's, like, involved everywhere. Like, he seriously is. He's, he's quality. Quality captain material, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it's like no, very impressive again with a with a new team, and to go undefeated regular season in your first, you know, mm -hmm. shows, shows you're doing something right as a captain. I appreciate yes. that. So okay. congratulations to Hockey Boys for winning that. Hockey. Um, which brings us to the uh, the winner of the top captain, who somehow seems to have slid up here. 
uh, with two undefeated back-to-back regular seasons in a row. Uh, Switters, a.k.a. Brewski. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I just have to say it was uh, it was really a pleasure playing for Brewski. I mean, Switters uh, right. <laughs> this season. Um, definitely one of the nicest guys I've ever had the, um, the pleasure of working under. Um, oh my god! Oh my super, gosh. super fun environment over there. Nothing but positivity. Uh, why well, lost week one after a lot of people were like, "Why the fuck did the Wims pick up Jack Sox?" Not only did I lose, I lost zero three. Um, the the environment and the support that was there and the desire to teach me where I went wrong in a very constructive way uh, from all members of the team. Uh, was fantastic, and you know you don't get that kind of environment without a great leader like Switters. Um, Switters, I'm sorry for the shot here. You know, <laughs> I just had to. Switters, aka please don't call me Brewski, aka Brewski. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. I'm sorry. I love you, Switters. You're the man. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> so, All right, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> All right, excellent. <laughs> Don Day's like, Swinners, please don't call me AKA Brewski, AKA Brewski. <laughs> like it. Like it, Don Day. Um, All right, so next award is Role Player. So, Role Player is traditionally the player that's moved up the most seeds or has moved around the most at the very least um, because either they were really good or the team meets weren't or, or whatever. So, uh, Steffi, do you want to take this one? Sure, because, you know, everybody loves a role player, okay? This is just life. So, the runner-up is the one and only Nate from Texas Subbies. He moved from the 2 seed to the 1 seed by gaining 62 PR points from the first week to the ninth week. That's a lot of points to accumulate in such a short amount of time. So, congratulations to him. That's definitely, you know, you're working your way up, man. You're a 1 say- seed now. Just to, just to give a just to give a little feedback on this one because I'll be honest, this was this was actually when just going through stats this was the hardest one that I was trying to figure out like what in the world happened here yeah and I was like I was like because normally I'm looking for people who move like up two seeds or three seeds or something like that um but the fact that Nate moved from two seed and I think he started off the season like sixty two points below the one seed and he yeah. still was able to finish the season in the one seed was fairly impressive awesome. yes yeah so awesome. it's like that's kind of why I, normally we want a little more movement out of the role player but i figure it's like you know how to do weekend week out i thought that was fairly impressive any other thoughts on nate um good stuff that's my deep thought on nate excellent excellent <laughs> any 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 thoughts from uh tnl on on nate texas stubbies No, All right. sorry, and I'm... we're moving on. Nope, we're oh, we're right. moving on. So let's Excellent. talk about the actual winner. Yes. Because you got to have a winner. And I feel like we're seeing a lot of maple syrup bank, you know, in this little lineup here because the one and only twos, he started as a three seed and then he moved up to a one seed. And that's impressive to go from three all the way up to one. Like, I'm not going to lie. That, that takes a lot of, you know, takes a lot of W's to get there. Um, so congratulations to Toos to, you know, working his way up. And now he gets to start as a one seed potentially next season if he wants to. So, you know, if the PR fits, we'll um, see. You must have quit. You must have quit. Nice. <laughs> exactly. Nice. So congratulations All to right. Toos. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, Toos, I, I think this is Toos' first season with us. To move that much in just, you know, nine short weeks. Mm-hmm. And and I, from what I understand, I don't think Maple Syrup Inc. is one of those teams that have like a flat distribution PR. I think they were top heavy, like they they had a kind of a traditional distribution. So to move from three seed to the one seed by the end of the season is pretty impressive. Yes. All right. So any other thoughts on twos? Um, like twos. I like twos last season when I got to play with twos. Um, I forgot whether they were a late addition to the team or not. Uh, and super happy to see the continued growth and progress of yes. the folks over at MSI. Yes. 
Absolutely. So now we're to now we're to some of the big awards here. So we're gonna start off rookie of the season. So Jamies, are you here? Yep. Jamies, do you want to take a rookie of the season for us? Yeah, so uh, runner-up for rookie of the season is uh, Primo from the Thermic Whims. He went 6-3 and three this season with a 55% uh, match score. I um, actually played Primo in the first round of the playoffs, and he, yeah, he's a good player. You know, I won, but yeah, shout out to him. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know it was his first season. That's pretty dope. Like, I think the first time that I played through, it was uh, that was definitely the hardest part, getting used to this format. Because, you know, you, you know, bring four best decks, and it's not always going to work. No, nope. definitely not. So. You know, Brewski just brought this up in chat, and I was going to say this. We were talking about this as we were uh, playing some other games earlier today. We we were kind of shocked at uh, the 6-3 and three season Primo put together. Because relative to some of the other seasons that were, seasons that were happening with Brewski, Risen, and myself, it, it, it was just weird to hear the losses come through. Um, and to look at that six in freaking three in their first season, yeah, I like so under the radar for for most of the season, and I can tell you right now the Altenberg of our team, and I think that's why uh, Primo had so much success. But it was, it was such in such a sleeper style. Shout out to Ben. Ben's the man. Go Ben. Nice. So congrats to Primo on winning runner-up. So who do we have for Rookie of the Season? So for Rookie of the Season, we have none other than KD1215 from Team Hot Pepper. He Hot. went 8 one Hot. Yep. And he won 62% of his matches, which is just insane. Yeah, for a rookie. For yeah. anyone, man. Anyone, yeah. 62%? That's... You know, when I played against him, he was like... His immediate, like the the first thing he said at the end was like, "Uh, did I did I make it? Did you see any misplays? Did you like?" He was just like looking to improve. He was having like a good time still, and he was easily like the best player that I played against. I think. No offense to anyone else that I did, because they were all pretty good. But yeah. he was like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Steph. I was like, "Was that directed to me?" I was like, "That's fine." I really wanted to play him so badly. I'm so upset that I did not get a chance to play him this Like, mm. I really wanted to play him. So, for this reason, like this reason, he's incredible. You know, one of, if, if it weren't for uh, the obvious winner of the MVP award, uh, KD was one of my favorites in the hunt. Uh, yeah. Through the last few weeks of the season. And for that to come out of a rookie. Um, you know, we've had Ray C in this league. We've had, uh, I'm trying to think of Dear Jason in this league. We've had some of these people that make it to like, you know, the, the top eights and all that good shit. Um, and they don't do that well in their first season. THL has a different meta. If for somebody to catch on and perform at that high of a level in their first season, fucking tip of that. Yeah. Congrats. Congratulations, Katie. One, two, one, five. Yeah. That's just. And same for a rookie, just, you know, it's same for anybody, actually, but um, what a what a great season from KD1215. Right. So, all right, so we are now to comeback player. And <laughs> this was a player who had a bad record in season eight, but they came back and turned it around and had a good record this season. So, uh, I can take this one. So, the runner-up for this award, he went from three and five, in season eight to seven and one in season nine. He's also in this call. It is Jack Sox. Jack Sox <laughs> is the runner up uh, comeback player for uh, for season nine. So Jack Sox, um, kind of what are you, what are your thoughts? Because like, I know the previous season with MSI, you, did, you had a little bit of a rough run, but you came back in and were just straight up killing it this season. Um, yeah. It's called uh, being a part of a positive team culture as well as a culture of winning um msi was a great place to be last season lots of great people i mean social butterfly over there um you know you got uh twos over there you got a bunch of great people over there um but having people around you that want you to get better 
it not just you know what can i do for them but what can we do for you definitely change that i would like to say i'm fucking eight and one i don't give a shit if my opponent dq'd that's not my fault damn it i still won that week i will fight you tooth and nail if you disagree with that uh anyways thank you will for uh saying nice things about yeah. me no no not a problem not a problem so uh, any other thoughts on jack Sykes runner-up comeback player good job not sucking this season i'm proud of you thanks mom <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, uh, also, I'd like to thank Dad. Thanks, Dad. Dad knows oh, who he welcome. is. Oh. Dad's in oh, chat. Uh, you're not my real father, Will. We've been over this. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I don't have to go on Mori anymore. Um, <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, the winner for Comeback Player of the Year. Um... He went two seven in season eight, and he went six and one in season nine. Um, the winner from Texas Stubbies is Nate. So, had the worst record. That actually had a good record this season. People, trust me, there are people who had worse records, but he's the one who worst record who turned it around this season. So, congratulations to Nate on winning the comeback player of the season. Oh heck yeah! And, 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 and any any thoughts on Nate winning uh, comeback player? I would like to know what Nate's key to success was um, for for their improvement this season. If if Nate's in chat or anybody from the Stubbies has any insight and wants to let me in on it, you know, I like to I like to know. Give us the tea. Yeah. Give us the tea. What what was the secret this season? What is the tea? So and we, and we I mean we talked about that. Uh, we, I mean it's not his first award. He also was the. Uh, role, one of the role players. So, I mean, he had an insane season to move from two to one, the two right. seed to one seed. And then, you know, the fact that he had a little bit rough in season eight just, you know, speaks to it. So, so congratulations to Nate. All right, so we're to the final two big awards here. So, next award is Most Valuable Player, MVP. MVP. All right, so... Uh, Stephanie, you want to take this one? I'll take this one. Alrighty, hear me out. This runner-up, this player. I I played this player in um in Sylve and kicked my butt. I I I respect this player immensely. Um, he goes by the name of Banja from Team Mox. He went eight one this season with a sixty six percent win rate. That's insane, and he's only the runner-up. And like that, that's incredible. Like he obviously is an MVP, kicking butt, doing the thing. This is what we aspire to be as players. So congratulations, Devanja. That's amazing. He should be very proud of himself. He definitely deserves the runner-up um, to this award for sure. Does anybody have any comments, concerns? Uh, uh, oh, I know someone's gonna have a comment. Uh, congratulations, Banja. Good work, man. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, good comment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was a member of my team, so I, I mean, I, I have nothing but the best thing to say about Banjo. He, he, he absolutely killed it this season, you know, 66%, uh, you know, win rate. He, he definitely was the the big hitter for our team, so congratulations to, to Banjo for winning runner-up. But he was not the winner. He was not the winner, because, you know what, there are other players that, you know, they're just oh, a little I, bit better. I, hold on, I, I think you have to call him by his official Discord title. Give me one second real quick. I'll, I'll yeah. patiently wait. I'm patiently waiting. So patience that I will wait for this player. Let me just try to hype this player up. All right, picture yeah, this. Yeah, hype him up. This player, all right? We all we all know their name. You know, this player went 9-0 with an 82% game win rate. Oh, God, I have to read all this? This yes. player is like nobody. Nobody wanted wants to, wanted to play this player. Nobody probably wants to play this player for like the next like ten. If we are still around for that long, hopefully we are. Oh, we'll be around. Um, you, you know, you heard it live. We'll be around. This is the MVP of Ragnaros League season nine. Oh god, the king of conquest, player of the scrubs, the one and only, the Brewski Bay from Thermic Winds. Congratulations, mm. Brewski, for you know what, just not losing. Doing the thing that we all just try to do. I mean, you did lose once, but we only talk about that. Like, other than that, you know, 82% win rate, man. Like, that's insane. Like, 
Jack Fox, what do you have to say about this one? Because I'm sure you have some comments um, about this MVP. I am just really sad, Dad, that uh, we got hosed and we couldn't do a father-son uh, winner runner up. Um, but apparently, you know, having a 73% game win rate uh, doesn't matter if your opponent doesn't show up for your match. Sorry, I let you down, Dad. Uh, but you, however, showed me what a man's supposed to be. You taught me how to shave. You told me that I stunk and need to use deodorant in my armpits. Um, you know, that time you went out to the store for a pack of cigarettes, you came back, unlike my other dad. Um, you know, I just, I really appreciate you. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that uh, I got hosed. <laughs> so... All right. So, yeah, no, I mean, just uh, have we – I got to be honest. I'm, uh, again, I'm not the historian for THL, but have we ever had a player go undefeated? Like, most seasons I see, like, 8-1 is, like, the best record. It's like, ha- have we actually had a player go an entire regular Oops. season without a loss? I can think of one. His name's Brewski. Um, you know. Well, I mean, besides, I, mean, <laughs> I, think, besides Brewski, I, I think Brewski <laughs> might be the first ever to, he might be. to pull this off. So I'm sure someone in chat will probably tell me, you know. Who would know? Yeah. We're yeah, not counting playoffs, right? I feel like Josh huh? would know. Uh, Josh okay. would probably know, too. Just regular season. <laughs> oh, wait. Hockey commented. Uh, these people both went undefeated, he said. Seho Yon and Aroy? Yeah, but it's like, okay, so. All right, so we may have had other ones, but but I mean, still, though, going 9-0 is insane enough, but an 80 some, 82% game win rate, that's just insane. That's gross. Just, yeah. Like That's considering great. the quality of play, I feel dirty. Played, like he played against Iron Fire, he played against Try, like in the regular season too. Like I'm just trying to think of like all the one seeds because our our conference was stacked, man. It was yes. <laughs> yeah, no, y'all had an insane. Uh, uh, Blurple had an insane just group of people uh, this season. So just you know, but for, congratulations, for like, Brisky, Brisky, taking them, them all down. I have nothing but good things to say about Brewski. I played against him. I was scared. Um, like, on the low, I was definitely very scared and, like, felt like, especially bringing Murloc Crease, I was like, oh, God, this is not going to work. I'm going to look so stupid. And, it, I mean, I can't say anything but good things about Brewski. Uh, and just to bring it up from a historical standpoint, we had uh, homeboy A-Roy. Uh, he did the undefeated thing. I'm trying to remember it. I think Slimsh's undefeated season got ruined in the last week. I could be wrong on that. Aww. But I also I think say- that uh, before we had the MVP Ooh. award, I want to say maybe Andy Rogers had an undefeated season. And I believe Possibly. Ray C in the three seed. Um, mm-hmm. I could be wrong on all or some of those. Um, but just some that came to mind. Fair. All right. So, but believe it or not, we're only halfway through the awards. We have some other awards we need to hand Wait, out. you forgot champion team. Oh, sorry, championship team. Yeah, sorry, we've been talking about the whole show. So, of course, the runner, runner up champ, runner up champion, runner up, uh, voter no confidence, and then the. I'm, when you've been spending the entire show talking about it, is it really that much of a surprise that I completely forget about it? So, the runner up, the voter no confidence had a great season, undefeated uh... until the finals. So, uh, Steffi, your thoughts on. Uh, B-O-N-C. Look, we'd rather lose to the fucking winners, all right? So I'm proud of you. Let's go. <laughs> Runner-up champion team, number two. <laughs> all right. So, but of course, the winners, they're with us right now. Yes. The winners of Ragnaros League Season 9, Team Next Level. So congratulations to Team Next Level. Whoop, 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 whoop. I guess you guys are all right. Yeah, all right. Hey. I'll tell you what. You mm-hmm. might be okay Hearthstone players, but you are some damn good guys. I yes. know, you guys are so nice. Oh, you guys have such nice little personalities. Nice guys. <laughs> They're the nice guys. Little what? personalities. Heard it here so first. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a compliment. Is it? Is it? Yes! <laughs> I'm saying that uh-uh. they're nice. And like they're modest and they're not like, oh, you booze, booze, I suck my dick. Like, yo, they're very nice. Yeah, that, no, y'all are awesome. So, congrats, so congratulations on your win. Yeah, congratulations. 
So it's because right, so Saku we... uh, told us to be nice from now on. Ah, uh, got it. Ah, uh, so it's rubbing off on other yeah, teams. Nice Good guy, Saku. Right nice, nice. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. No! So, so we're we're we have we that's all the season nine awards, but we still have some all star awards we need to hand out. And of course, if you're paying attention to the Facebook and the Discord this week, uh, on Monday evening, finally after I got correct stats, um, the all star voting was opened up. It stayed open technically. I said until eleven fifty nine p.m., but I didn't wake up until five thirty this morning to close the poll. So you actually got an additional five and a half hours out of this. So, but this is the voting for. Ragnaros and Savannah's League Season 6 All-Stars. And I believe we're going to start with... Uh, and Are we going to start with Rag or... Uh, I have Rag up right now. So why don't you have we Rag up. Over? Rag yep. up right now. All right, excellent. So, and we're going to start in the 5 seed. So, the 5 seed for... Well, actually, we'll start with Red Gold for obvious reasons here. So, the 5 seed for Red Gold Ragnaros League Conference is... AO, a vote of no confidence. So congratulations to Ao. He got <laughs> he got um, uh, seventy point eight percent of the vote for yes, Rag. So congratulations to Ao on winning that. The five seed for Blue Purple. Oh, you're doing it this way. God, you're a pain in my ass. Oh, sorry. Do you, you, you want me to do? You, uh, sorry, it's your call. Do you yeah, just remember why? Remember why I asked you if we were gonna do it that way? You said five through one. You said. Oh yeah, you're gun. correct. You're correct. You're correct. I'm sorry. I apologize. All right, so the four seed for Red Gold Conference, we actually have a tie, this and they are both going. They are both going to have the opportunity to play in the All Star game. Aww. That's so, cool. both of them got forty one point seven percent of the vote, oh. and the All Star for four seed Red Gold Conference in Rag League is Brasky <gasps> and the Town Drunk. Oh, daddy! <laughs> so, congratulations to both Brasky and the Town Drunk. Just you know, just killing it on the voting. Um, they had a tie. Couldn't break the tie, unfortunately. So we're going to see both of them in the All-Star game. All right, the three seed for Red Gold. So with 60.4% of the vote for the, the Red Gold three seeds, it is actually Comp from Defias Brotherhood. Captain so, Comp! Go, Comp, go! Comp is here. Go, Comp, go! So congrats to Comp um, on that. So Woo! the two seed from the pod people with 50% of the people. vote, Zoroshio. So congratulations to Zoroshio for winning the red gold two seed all-star. Hot dang. Hell of a season from Zoroshio. Yeah, yeah, hell of a season. Yeah, five, five. Butt. Five, five, two, I think, this season. Yeah, just yeah, he did really great record. well. Then for red gold, one seed, all star, Ragnaros League. Believe it or not, we have another tie. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, with forty three point eight percent of the vote each from voter no confidence, we have Rob Bobson. Woo! <laughs> it's like I'm sorry. The other person. Again, and they'll both have the opportunity to play in the All-Star game. The other person. From Team Mox, Bonja. <gasps> so congratulations to both Robobson and Bonja, the one seeds for Red Yay. Conference this season. So congratulations for Robobson and Bonja for winning this. Good job, guys. Hi. That's Hi. amazing. So, so, we, so we have the Red Gold All-Stars with seven people believe it or not. So what are your thoughts on looking at these uh, all-star players? Um, I have nothing but respect for AO and to finally see AO get the respect of the community that he so deserves is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, anything Brasky's involved in, I want a part of. Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to Donnie brag about this. Um, can we please <laughs> ban him again before the all-star uh, <laughs> event? And, uh, you know, Rabobble and Bonch up at the one seed. Those are two absolute studs and uh, guys that were favorites of mine for MVP candidates. So that's scary over there. Absolutely. So any any other thoughts on this before we move to Blurple, Blue Purple? I just want to highlight Hockey Boy's comment. That <laughs> three out of the five vote of no. I know. <laughs> 
Oh, oh, oh. I wonder what our percentage is. Oh, yeah. Y'all think y'all are the only ones that can pull three of the five all-stars? Uh-huh. Y'all think that? Let's get to Blurple and let us have that conversation again. Facts. <laughs> All right. So any any other thoughts on Red Gold before we move over to the Blurple? Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, two of the Vote No Confidence members are only point fives. So really, that's only two members. True. I can't argue with that. Yeah, they, t- they tied on this one, so. I guess, uh, but whatever. You know yeah. what? <laughs> you know what? They're, they're still representing. They're, they're still, representing. still amazing and lovable. Okay, people voted for them. That's very kind. Okay. Yes, very kind. Very kind. They're very nice. They got All right. nice little personality. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad our pictures are not on the screen because I am face palming right now. Like, uh, uh, like, so uh, over in Blurple. Yeah. Blurple. All right. So five seed. With 79.2% of the vote from the Thermic Whims. Almost as good as my win rate. Jack Sox. <laughs> Shut up, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for you. That's not even <laughs> I voted for you too, so that's. Uh... I just don't know who that other uh, 20.8% voted for other than themselves. Um, I, I, have okay. that, I have that, but I will not share that data. <laughs> Can but... you share it with us later? I kind of want to know. We'll yeah, talk about maybe. it later. I'll, I'll, I'll consider it once we're off, maybe. Transparency. Share Transparency. with everyone. Hot. So, the four seed with 47.9% of the vote from Collective Mayhem. Follow Durden. So, Durden is our four seed. Nice. So, congratulations to Durden. Three seed with 52.1% of the vote for the three seeds. From the Thermic Whims, we talked about him already. <laughs> Primo, actually, yeah. The rest of the, the rest of the team, the rest of the, the blue purple division, we mentioned multiple times already. Right, so. about them. Yeah. So congratulations to Primo, three seed All Star for the Blurple division in Ragnaros, the two seed, with the highest percentage of vote I believe in between any of the leagues, eighty nine point six percent of the vote. From Hot Pepper, we talked about her. We talked about him already. KD one two one five. Hot 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 hot. So, Ooh. congratulations to Ooh. KD one two one five. I will say that uh, you know, spoiler alert for those out there who are uh, you know worried about learning these sorts of things. My my uh, vote definitely went to somebody else that's in this call. <clears throat> Just gonna go ahead and put that out there publicly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not shot at, not oh, shot no. at KD, not shot at KD. I oh. just believe there's somebody whose uh, name starts with S that is not Steffi. Um, <laughs> got my <laughs> vote. Just no. well, I, don't know. I don't think I was qualified for this. Uh, I, you play. Like yeah, that's all it takes. Oh, I mean... uh, no, sorry, sorry. I should have explained this up front. The All Star voting, you had to play at least five regular season games to be considered yeah. for All Stars. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, if you came in later, later half the season, unfortunately you may not. In fact, I actually don't think you were. Unfortunately, sorry, Suzuru. You got five and one, Suzuru, right? Uh, oh, I should say yeah, it six, was in the voting. Sorry, he did. I was six I, and one, but that was, that, that was three <laughs> playoff games. Oh yeah, so yeah, uh, I think I, I think I regular. Think season. Oh, so you were one shy. Maybe Is I that what it was? One shy, unfortunately. I thought mm-hmm. it was in there. In my in my heart, I I'm one of those that I abstain if I don't actually have the person I want to vote for there. Yeah, I'm an abstainer. I do yep. that. All right, and the one seed for Blurple Division shouldn't be any surprise here. Seventy nine point two percent of the vote from the Thermic Whims. Our MVP, Brisky. Good job, Brisky. So con- congratulations. So thoughts on uh, Blurple All Stars? No ties are here, unfortunately. Um, Dude, rolled is like about to get rolled. <laughs> I just I just want to know uh according to Collective Mayhem if the All-Star team follows the same rules where uh if followed dirt and loses we all lose. Um well, since, yeah, you're, since you're all playing at the exact same time is I guess yeah. yes. I just want to put this for the record for the two. I actually think that KD deserves it like 100%. I voted for him. So, oh, KD nice. was stud. Absolute stud. Oh, yeah, Katie was an absolute stud this season. So, Next all right. Week. And with that, we wrap up Ragnaros League All Stars. Now, Ragnaros League All Stars, which we'll talk about in the schedule in a moment, is actually not going to be until, I believe, August the 5th. 5th. 
is Ragnarok's mm-hmm. All-Stars, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. So we have a little bit of time for this. But this Sunday, though, we are going to have the Savannah's League All-Stars. And let's talk about Savannah's League All-Stars. And we're going to, again, start with the Red Gold Conference here. So Red Gold, 5 seed. Um, with 35.7% of the vote. This is actually a very close vote. This one was but really was, close. Yeah. But this, but there was a, but there was a clear cut winner from Tan Pam Surf Slam, Osmonaut. Osmonaut, and I will say, Osmonaut is one of the few people I did see campaigning both in the Discord and uh, Facebook to get All Star votes. So congratulations to Osmonaut for being the fifth seed uh, for the Red Gold Conference. The fourth seed from Argent Terminus Legion with 60.7% of the vote, Blue Spartan. So, Blue Spartan, congratulations. Four seed. <laughs> now, for Red Gold Conference, Sylvanas League Season 6, with 57.1% of the vote. And I'll be honest, I'm surprised he was ended up in the three seed here because he's also the one seed from, or tied for the one seed from Ragnaros. Rebobson, 65,340,285 boars. Is Which is how many All-Star votes he also got. Easy. That's huh? also how many vote. That's also how many votes Robson got. <laughs> yes. Facts. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so. So congratulations to Rob Austin, three seed. Uh, the two seed. With fifty three point six percent of the vote from Argent Terminus Legion, he was, I believe, I'm trying to think, was he the? No, Rob Austin was MVP, correct? For and this person was the runner up, I think. Uh, Alien, was, no, 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 sorry, no, I apologize. Uh, Alien, the, the, this was the Silv, all, this was the Silv, um, MVP. Alien yeah. Santa mm-hmm. from Argent Hot. Terminus Legion. So congratulations to Alien Santa from Argent Terminus Legion, to number two All-Star. Congrats, Glenn. Yes. Yeah. In the one seed for Red Gold, with 67.9% of the vote, from Explosive Sheep, Actually, I realized I may have left a G off of here. You did. Yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it. It's Cardigan. I so love congratulations. his name. It's like my favorite congratulations name. to Cardigan for the one seed. So, so now we have the red gold all stars. Kind of uh, any thoughts on on these players here? Uh, where's red division? Ooh, <laughs> no, sorry, no, wait, I, no, wait. I thought red division is all. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, because yeah, red was the one that only fearless hearth. So yeah, we have a bunch of yellow. And, yeah. Well, sorry, explosive sheep. Yeah. Oh, uh, explosive. explosive... Sheep I think oh, explosive they... sheep was in the red. I have to check this now because I thought I double checked to make sure that. Uh... I'll check it as well because I might be mistaken. Oh no, sorry. Sorry, they were the last. They were the last place team in yellow division. So yeah, <laughs> not a single, not a single player from red division in Savannah's league made the all stars. Rip on you, you... Rex. So, a little, a little rough for Red Division this season, so. All right, so, that wraps up the Rolled All-Stars. Any other thoughts before we move to Blurple? Let's roll them. Let's roll them. All right, five seed for Blue Purple. From, with 39.3% of the vote, again, another close vote here, from Team Black Lotus and our, cross, our crossover runner-up, Dave Petum. Pet him, Dave. Pet him. Pet him. Dave. Pet him, Dave. Pet him. Dave, 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 Dave. Dave, pet him. The four seed. Pet him. M. Or, or when one unfortunate misspeaking that I had last season, me. <laughs> so, um, four seed. Sixty-seven point nine percent of the vote from the Toki Tinker fan club. Sage. So congratulations to Sage for the four seed All Star spot. In the three seed, with the second highest percentage of votes, it's eighty five point seven percent of the vote from Toki Tinker Fan Club. We have Crayon. So congratulations, Crayon, for winning that. The two seed, with eighty two point one percent of the vote, the Ugly Mucklings is the team. And Starlax is the player. I was about to say, is the whole is the whole team playing in the two seed? Sure, why not? We'll do that. It's like so. Starlax from the Ugly Mucklings is our two seed for the Blurple division. And then finally, the one seed. 
with 57.1% of the vote. <laughs> From Team Black Lotus. <laughs> Twiz! Twiz is the blur. Oh, Twiz is yeah. the blur for one. Let's see. Wow. This looks like it's going to be a fun one. That's a tasty yeah. one right there. I, that I'm is. This. I, was like, I mean, he, I, he, did, he had a good season. He ended up uh, five and one. Uh, really season. Unfortunately, I think he did have one DQ in there, but he had, he had, a, he had a pretty good season. Yeah, it looks so, pretty sick. Yeah, this is, yeah I'm, I'm really excited for this one on Sunday. So, um, congratulations to all the Sylvanas League Season 6 All-Stars on this one. Um, and we are actually now wrapping up. Now, I, I'm actually going to cut ahead a few things real quick here. Uh, if you want to know about stream match, pick them, basically, because Jamie's was picking his own team for most of the matches. Um, <laughs> he went like six for eight of the week. All the rest of us were not even close. So That's congratulations to Jamie. Yeah, yeah, number one. Yeah, congratulations to Jamie's on that. So, all right, Facebook questions. There's really, I'm only going to really have time for, I think, maybe a couple here, but I want to hit the big ones. And, of course, Nate's always, the questions he always asks is here. So, um, uh, Ross has said, Steffi, how you doing? So, What's up? Just kinda, What's up? Um, all right, so uh, Nate asked, this is our Do Mary Kill for this evening, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. Mm. So, so we're, thought, we're, 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 we're gonna need quick answers on this one this evening. So, all right, all right. I thought about this one, so I'll give you, I'll give you the down and dirty. Okay. All right. Originally, I was gonna say I want to marry Thanksgiving, but then I thought about it. If I did no. Thanksgiving every day, I would be on that show, My Six Hundred Pound Life, uh, yep. because that's just how I roll. So we do Thanksgiving. All right. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, and what? Halloween. 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 We marry Halloween because clearly it's amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, Halloween is the best holiday out there. Um, and I don't need to say more. It speaks for itself. We kill Valentine's Day because uh, it's a superficial made up holiday for the greeting card companies uh, and the chocolate people who don't sell shit all year long. And um, also, nobody ever put a Valentine's in my box when I was in elementary school. So fuck Valentine's Day. <laughs> I pre- you know, I appreciate the kill is something that's truly bitter. <laughs> like, 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 obviously there is some pent up resentment towards Valentine's Day, and I appreciate that. So that being said, I actually agree with Jack Sox on this one. And I, I don't think you can actually do or marry Thanksgiving. You really cannot. It's like you. As much as I would like to eat pumpkin pie and turkey and gravy on a daily basis and stuffing and everything else, I just can't do it. I just can't. So Thanksgiving is definitely the do. Halloween is the merry because you get some candy and you know everybody's dressed up in costumes and stuff. So pretty cool. And then, yeah, Valentine's Day was, you know, it's just another day for guys to get in trouble when they're, you know, forget it. So Valentine's Day is the kill. I think I would do Valentine's Day because it's supposed to be this, like, romantic and thoughtful and, like, sexy holiday. And, like, that sounds nice to just have on the side when, like, petals and have candy. Like, that sounds nice. You easily marry Halloween. Because, I mean, it's just, a, it's fun. I, I, I personally, I love Halloween. I live every year. Who doesn't love dressing up? And you see cute little children and give candy. And, like, it's just, it's a good time for everybody. So you easily marry Halloween. And I'm okay with killing Thanksgiving. Like, I'm sorry. We should be thankful every day. All year. I think it's kind of bogus if you want me to be real. Um, so... Just like we yeah. should only be... Oh, so, wait, wait. You just gave me permission to be loving and thoughtful only one day a year and still keep my healthy, well-balanced relationship? That's Thanks, not Stephanie. what I said. No, Those that's exactly what you said. Um, By your reasoning you for why you kill Thanksgiving, your reasoning for why you kill Thanksgiving is that we should be thankful all year long. So what you yeah. just told me is that I only need to be kind and caring and loving once a year. No. I was saying, okay, I said. can, can, can I make uh-huh. an argument for killing Thanksgiving, an actual argument for killing Thanksgiving? 
Um, I thought we were with short answers here. We are short answers, but I will say, you know, based on what the history of Thanksgiving is, it might not be the worst holiday to kill. Thank you. Uh, like, <laughs> thank you. Depends like on that. how you want to look. At, it depends on how you want to look <laughs> at that. There's two lenses. There's the raping and pillaging of America by the settlers before those pilgrims. Yep. Or there is the fact that those natives uh, or indigenous people, as they like to be called, were kind and forgiving enough that they looked at these white men who just slaughtered their friends and family down south and said, you know what? We'll give you a shot and not let you starve in the winter. And then the next year, those white men actually said, hey, people exist outside the world besides us. Um, so let's all have a celebration and thank these indigenous people for saving our asses. So it depends on how you want to look at it. Don't get me started. This yeah. is, you're going after my livelihood here, man. I can history all I, around you here. I can Got history. It. Okay, under, understood. So, TNL, do y'all have sort of a collective answer on this one? <laughs> I don't think we've discussed this yet. You, this okay. isn't something you guys talk about on a regular basis? Interesting. No, this is hard. No, we talk about what kind of pajamas we should be wearing. I need to know diamonds. I need to know what diamonds wearing for pajamas. He's trying to tell us right now. And you guys are talking over him. Go ahead. Diamond. Oh no. I, my pajamas are like in the picture for the TNL thing. And that's why we, we have made an actual chat hashtag jammies. So we could all post your jammies and we actually all got to see each other for the first time. Aww. And I was actually really impressed. I'm like, Oh, oh yeah. Every, everybody's wearing nice. jammies. I think they're, Aww. yeah, they are. Every single really, one of them. Really cool. And nice. I got to see him too. I guess see what Bonding. my teammates look like. You get to see your, like... your teammates in their jammies. Hot. Yeah, man. Hmm. I've never seen what Sweaters looks like, but I have an amazing image of him drawn in my head. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did a video chat in no. Discord with your teammates? No. Nope. Not no. living your best life, all right? That, maybe that's why we did. got a video chat in Discord and play games with Teammates, oh, we play awesome. games. We play yeah, games. You got you to interact. You got to look at each other and be like, what's up, man? Let's do this. I mean, I think <laughs> I streamed once. There you go. Oh, yeah. Mm. Nice. So, all right. So, I think that's the rest of the Facebook questions. We're running almost at two hours here. So, awesome. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this very, very quickly. So, yeah, do this that. Is, this, this is going to be the last time I'm talking for this season. So, we will be back on August 23rd to do the team reveal and division rolling for season 10, seven, uh, rag season 10, so season seven, but we have a lot of stuff before that. Um, first off, we're actually going to be continuing Friday night fights during the off season because we're going to be highlighting the best of MCL, uh, mysterious challenger league. So, uh, tomorrow night, you're actually going to have the chance to see Josh Sampson versus Chigmo and blood hunter versus Durden, um, play their matches. Uh, also some exciting events Saturday, um, 11 AM Eastern, uh, you can find the link on both the Discord and Facebook. Um, we have Darkstone number four. It's kind of a fun little tournament where there are card restrictions. There are certain things that you cannot use. Um, so it's going to be a very a lot of fun. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, 29th, as we talked about, Savannah's League All-Stars, again, 8 p.m. Eastern for that. On August 4th, uh, assuming all the cards have been reviewed, revealed at this time, since it's coming out on the 7th, I believe, um, we're going to have the Boomsday Project card review. So I don't know who's going to be involved with that. I don't even know what time it's going to be. It's definitely going to be starting at 8 p.m. Eastern because normally those card review streams go for about five hours or so. Um, so we're not going to do that. So uh, we'll find out the time. August 5th, uh, Rag All-Stars for that. August 11th and 12th, we have our tournament that we have immediately after the drop of an expansion, and that will continue. We're going to have the Boomsday Project tournament. Um, it actually starts at 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday. Uh, top 16 will play out on Sunday um, for that. Uh, more info will be coming about that soon. Also, August 18th and 19th, we're going to try. The, we're gonna have the first THL Open Series. Third Saturday of every month, it's going to be an open tournament. Anybody can join. Um, I will say the first one, is, I think, is restricted to 84 players. So that way we can just kind of get the idea on this for running. Um, but it's going to start at 11 a.m. Eastern on that day. And then we said August 23rd, we'll see you again for Tavern Talk with the start of the new season being August 27th. So mark your calendars. August 27th will be the new, the, will be the start of season seven of Silvly and season 10 of Ragnaros. So TNL, thanks for being here this evening. Thanks for thanks having us. For having thanks us. for having us. 
We're, we'll look forward to being back here next year. <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, I, and I appreciate that confidence. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, Jack Sox, thank you for being here. Um, I, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got it. All right, Steffi, thanks for being here this evening. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank am you I, am for I, being here, Forrest. Am I missing something? Am I just, like... Um, um yeah. Oh. I'm missing it, too. Whatever yeah, it is. Like, Does it make you feel any better? No, uh, uh, but I, I mean, I've seen Jack Sox dancing, but that's like on a two-second delay, so I don't know what he's doing right now, so... <laughs> yeah, anyway. All right, so... Uh, join us tomorrow night, Friday Night Fights. Um, as I said, we're going to do some MCL. So, but until the 23rd, let's say 23rd, right? Sorry, I got to keep so going back to my show now. August 23rd. So until August 23rd, catch us on Twitch, catch us on Facebook, catch us on Discord. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. 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 Look, I'm just trying to add some flavor, flavor, flavor. Um, anyway, so I have no goddamn clue what is going on. So we can yeah. confirm, ladies and gentlemen, you could pay to be a guest. Um, anyway, so flavor. You, what happened? You, tons of memes out there living the dream. Um, what you, happened? You, anyway, so what is going on? Please go the fat fuck away. Thank you. Tons of memes out there living the dream. Anyway, so... Look, I'm just trying to add some flavor. Um... I have no goddamn clue what is going on.